VIP Access, VIP Access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access. This is episode five of the second season of my amazing show that is featuring various artists and creatives from all over Africa. I'm currently in Nairobi, Kenya, and today I'm going to be talking to one of my favorite artists. She's a rapper, she's a singer, she's a dope songwriter. She's a very dope rapper. You know, you can put her to the test and she will not disappoint you. Mm-hmm. She has given us amazing EPs, including Don't Consume If The Seal Is Broken. You might know who I'm already talking about. Most recently, she released a collaboration album called Chonjo. Kwa hivyo lot kwa Chonjo sana hapa na wangeshi. Asante sana. Karibu, how are you? I'm good. Lovely to be here. Great to have you. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? It's 2023. What's up? It's a new how year, actually. How are you feeling? Um, how was 2022 to you? How did the last year treat you? Wow, actually. Um, 2023, actually, I just had my birthday. Oh. So now I'm at least a year older, which is, means I'm getting closer to a year I don't want to get to. But that's <laughs> Almost that. 30. Almost 30. <laughs> Almost 30. I'm going to stop saying that. Join us on the third floor. <laughs> it, it looks nice, though. Guys say it's nice, I it's guess. It's nice. Guess. It's nice. Mm-hmm. Like, you look back at um, when you are 20s and... I feel I don't know I just feel like I got into I got more confident in the 30s. Mm. There's a lot of um BS that we take when you're 20s. There is a lot. And when you're approaching your 30s you look back when you're like 22, 23 you're like now I wouldn't do some of the things I did or I wouldn't be taking some of the um nonsense I didn't have to take. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'm actually looking forward to that. But anyway, enough about my age. I'm not going to be saying it anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 2022 was 22 was my comeback here, actually. I'd been out of music for, is it three or four years? I think it was four years. Mm. And I think 2022 is when I, I decided in 2021 I'm coming back. So I started working on the album then. Then 2022 was now the surprise, guys. I'm back. You had a strong comeback. Mm. Like, what? Mm. It was very um, visible and... Like, I said, you know, we, did, we didn't see it coming, but mm. you warned us and you're like, yeah, me and Ska, mm. we're about to release something. Yes. So how was that? Like coming together with Ska uh, from Kadi- Cardinali yes. and, you know, releasing this album? Um, at first, it was, it was just an idea I grew in my head. For how I'm gonna come back, and then when I approached him with the idea, and he was just like, "Good, let's do it." Really? Yeah, it was really an easy thing. It was like one, two, three steps. We started working on it. We did. We took like two months. We used to go out of Nairobi to like a house where like now you can be creative for like a whole week. Mm. Created the album. We go. We go. We go back to Nairobi. Go on with our businesses. Come back for now one week. Do the album. Mm. So it was a very organic um, preparation for the album. So I think like everything last year was just like tap, 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 without any roadblocks. Okay. Mm. And so when you hit Up's car, you're like, I want to do a collaboration album with you. Mm. Was it like, oh, that's so cool. Or I really, I really love your style. Or <laughs> in terms of the chemistry, how did that come about? Or was it hard to, you know, get into each other's style? It's not hard at all to get into each other's style. I think it's a he's the one style and my style that we can um, col- collaborate yes. with without having any problems. It's not yeah. hard. You don't have to. You do this. You do this. I don't want to do this. But it's just very. It's like everyone is just doing their sugar thing. Sugar and water, yeah. And you create something. Sugar and water. Sugar and I water. I love that. Mm. I love that. Romantic rivals. Romantic rivals. Who, who even thought about that in the beginning? It's still part of the album process. So you see, when you're making an album, you make a bunch of songs. Yeah. And then we always knew, me I knew personally, I said in the album, I have a cardinal in collabo. Luckily, I was part of a member of the group. Mm. So it was very easy for us to just come together one time in the studio, had the beats, started writing all of us, finished the song that same day. So that's how Romantic Rivals came to be. And um, Nairobi Peng? Nairobi Peng, still part of the album. Um, I That's my jam. That's your jam. <laughs> Actually, I had the beat. Then I started writing it down and I sent the idea to him. And he was just like, Kinikali, Tupanyi. So it happened. Hey, you're a badass rapper. Like, thank you. respect to you, Angeshi. Respect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what happened? Like, during the three years break, like, mm. what happened that you felt I need a little break out of the industry or... Um, what was that period like? Um, what happened for me to take the break? I was exhausted. Mm. Uh, the industry had exhausted me. Mm. And I had just finished uni also, okay. university. So I was in a big... 
such a huge transition period and mm. I wanted to, I really asked myself, what else can I do in this world apart from music? Because this is exhausting me and I don't want to stay here because it's also killing my mental health a bit. Yeah. So that's when I decided, let me go away quietly. For one year, it became two years, became three years, and then I started getting a bit bored. Because, you know, when God gives you a calling for something, you never feel fulfilled in your life mm. until you respond to that calling. Mm. So it used to bug just to bug my ear every time. I'm just doing something. It's just like, Yo, you know, you're supposed to be doing music. And then even anywhere you go, you find a fan who's like serving you at a table. And then they're just like, Mono talker. And I think I also got tired of being asked all the time, Mukoapi, Ulienda, Nini. So I'm just like, let me do this and let's make people shut up. Mm. But then also let me do this for myself. So the break was for me to find more parts of me outside yeah. of music. So what were you actually doing like over the f over the four years? Like what were your days like? Because people always ask artists like, when you wake up, what do you do? I go mm. to the studio, I do interviews, mm. I do songwriting. Mm. But for an artist like you to be out of the game for four years, like what was your everyday like? My everyday of being out, there was a lot, in the beginning there was a lot of, void days mm -hmm. then i got into like businesses that i do okay that are still supporting me right now fantastic um traveling i traveled a lot i what else did i do oh You're yes just also... living life yeah i also <laughs> learned how to i'm trying to be a skydiver so i started doing my skydiving license oh yeah. that's so, so something impressive I in... thank wow. you wow mm. wow you're so cool <laughs> I'm taking a break from music because I'm going skydiving. I love it. I did the skydiving, yeah. I love it. Mm. And then let's go back a little bit more, like to the time we actually met. I think the time I saw you and met you and we talked was at Coke Studio. Oh, yeah. Where um, I was working as a publicist of the show. And you had a special segment on Coke Studio when you also made another comeback. Mm. And that was just before you had got into a road accident. Do you remember that moment? Mm. Um, and do you remember that comeback? And do you remember that um, situation you're in when you're in, a, in an accident? Do you remember your state of mind? Did you ever think like you'd come out of that? And what was that period like for you? Or oh, during the, the accident? Right? Yeah. It's, I, I, let me tell you the one thing that exhausted me the most about the industry before. Yeah. Was that question always used to be there. Okay. The reminder of like the accident time. And you didn't so, want to I was so go tired. back to that. Yeah. I was so tired of those questions. But today I'm going to answer them. Okay. So during <laughs> that time... Um, I don't know. Um, have you ever had like just a peace? Like it was, can I say peace? It was ignorance is bliss. So during the time of mostly like in the hospital and recovery time, it was a lot of ignorance is bliss, just a peaceful state. It was like a rebirth, like you're back to being a baby. Mm. So you don't have so many worries of the world. Because yeah. of course your mom and everybody's taking care of you to feed you, to do everything. So it's just like it was a moment of... I'm just trying to rebuild this body and just come back to where I'm going to be, watch TV. Literally, it was wake up, watch TV, eat, sleep, recover. Mm -hmm. That was it. So it was a moment of peace and quiet. Mm -hmm. And then like now coming back, the industry was now when the noise started happening mm -hmm. and everything around that because you, you, as I said, I didn't enjoy the fact that it was more about the accident I was in than it was about the music. Mm -hmm. So I used to, sort of dread being in such spaces because mm. yeah, because Coke Studio was fun, yeah? Yeah. But I also felt like there was a lot of emphasis on what I had gone through. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And so I, so for that time and period, I felt less of a musician and more of a victim of my circumstances. Okay. Mm. I understand. Mm. And do you feel like you've now overcome, you know, that totally. feeling? Yeah. Okay. Totally. You That's have... why you disappear and then you come back and nobody has asked me that question until today. Mm. So you see, it was a good, it was a win-win for yeah, me. Yeah, it mm. was, it was. And so, you know, you're an artist who've overcome a lot of obstacles along um, your journey and in your career, and so many other artists have other obstacles. Mm. Um, at this very point in time, you're back in the industry, you have a, a collaborative album with Ska, which is doing quite well. Mm. Um, I think before this interview started, you also told me that you're now taking into uh, distribution and you're distributing your own music. Mm -hmm. So could you tell me a little bit more about coming into your own and wanting to own more of your business mm. in, in music, especially? Very, tell me about that coming. I had, you have to figure out a way to come into your own, especially when you get older, because when I was younger, I think I gave too much power of myself to 
too many different people. Okay. So like when you come back and you're wondering, hey, why is this song that I did at this time? Why am I not getting the money from it? Mm. So somebody else had distributed it. Then you ask about another song, somebody else is distributing it. So just like there are too many people who have hands in my bank account that I can't even feel. Yeah. And you do, you rented me in the studio. Yeah. So that was my main problem. So it was just like a day I sat down, I wrote so many emails to everybody asking them back for the songs. How much payment has been made to you guys that hasn't been made to me? And literally in December, I got a check from one of the people who sent it back. And I told them, take it off, return it back to me. And now I redistribute it. So it's just, there's a power in owning your own things because you see it as, this is an asset that I have, that even when I stop making music, I'm still always going to get this distribution check in. Mm. So distribution, distributing yourself has its upsides and also its downsides to it because you, the company will come and they'll tell you, we'll send your song to America, UK, Germany, you'll be everywhere. But if I'm everywhere and that I'm not feeling it myself, what's the need for that? Yeah. So would I rather stay in my small, in my bubble that I created where I own it? Mm -hmm. Or do I give this power to somebody else and I don't feel it? So I think I need to find the midpoint of like a good agreement where yeah. it's just like you can still take me out, yes. but I'm still the one running the show on yeah. the side. Yeah. And in terms of other aspects of your career, you know, day-to-day -day management, mm. PR, the branding, mm. uh, the production for the songs and videos, mm. what kind of assistance are you getting? And do you have a team now mm. or people you're working with who you can trust? Mm. Um, luckily, I've been here for 10 years. So if I was trying to do what I'm doing right now before, I wouldn't be able to get myself to the places I am in right now. But to answer that question, I do have a team. But it's a small team. Literally, you can count my team with like three fingers. One, two, three people. Mm. And though I now understand the things I need to do. Mm. So PR, of course, I can't do my own PR. Mm. So somebody has to do that. But the table discussions, I am there. Because if I know how to do the same discussions in my businesses, how hard is it for me to do it in music mm. and say some things? But there are guys who are helping me out. So I'm building my team as I'm moving. Not team first, then we move. It's... Okay, guys, me, I'm moving. So who's who's jumping on this thing and who's, who can do these things for me mm. as we're going? Mm. Mm. I feel like you're the queen of mixtapes and EPs because, <laughs> you know, you, you're you such a, a, a like accomplished artist, but mm. you didn't even have an album until Chonjo. Mm. Um, and you haven't like set, put out a record and said, this is my album. It's mm. like, this is my mixtape. This is my EP. This is my so song. what's up with the mixtapes and EPs? Like what makes you brand uh, don't consume if the seal is broken as a as mixtape an, and not an album, like, what's the difference for you? Um, that is actually true. And that's why this year I'm working on my own solo one. Mm. So before the end of this year, I'll have my own solo album. Because I also saw, I, I've seen the same thing you saw. I'm just like, I need an album now that's just like Wangeshi. Yeah. But if it's mixtape, you know, starting off, you start with a mixtape if you're a rapper. So okay. the guys here, you know, rappers are mixtape people. Yes. EP... EP just basically means a definition. So if you put out a track, if you put out a number of songs that's less than, I think it's seven, yeah, it automatically is registered as an EP. Mm. If it's more than seven, it's an album. So I think it's just the number of songs that I chose. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And um, the new album mm. or the upcoming album, do you already have a, con a concept for it? Do you know who you want to work on the album with? And do you think it's going to come out in 2023? Oh, it has to come out in 2023. <laughs> it has to. There's no other way it's going to happen. Oh my happen. God, Wangeshi is releasing an album in 2023. 2023. Yes. You had it right here on VIP Access. That's like Indeed. an exclusive. That is an exclusive. Um, the concept is in my mind. So I started the concept in my mind. And then I'm going to start working on it next week, actually. So you've actually come at the right time. So next, next week is when I'm going on my vacation out of Nairobi. And then I just sit down by myself and write the music. I got the name of the album last week, this weekend. You even have the name. <laughs> I got the name. It came, God gave it. <laughs> you started 2023 so nicely. <laughs> you must run. Ah, mm. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you. And, um, you know, as a rapper, who are the other artists or rappers or individuals who inspired you to be who you are um, mm. or who you listen to back then or even now? I think my biggest inspiration back then was Nazizi. I always say I wouldn't have started music if I didn't start listening. If I didn't hear Nazizi first saying, Mama, Mama, I'm a rapper. And I was just like, who's this cool babe? 
And then I just said, I want to be like this cool babe. So I used to like write songs and perform them in a set. Not write songs. I used to perform her songs in a, on assembly. Ah, then it reached wow. a point where I was just like, now let's write our own. So now that's when I started like doing my own writing. So as a child, it was not as easy as I've grown bigger. And, and um, I'd say my biggest inspiration right now, hey, have many. But there's really somebody who I like right now. She's a UK rapper. I've forgotten her name. It's and I'm sorry fine. if I've forgotten um, her name. What's her name? Mm. I saw her the other day. Point I, and I, I think... Can't stop me. Don't mm. I can't believe I've forgotten her name and I'm here saying she inspires me. Or you can remember, you can if you remember another person, you can mention someone else. But if you want to mention her, you can also try to remember. <laughs> Lil Sims. I thought there so. There it is. There it is. Lil Sims. Mm. 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 I, I really, see. I really study her nowadays. I see. Yeah. I see. Mm. And um, what kind of music do you listen to, apart from like Lil Sims and... Apart from rap music, mm -hmm. I actually don't listen to that much music. Really? Well, weirdly enough, because guys just be like, which new song has come out? I'm just like, I don't know new music, by the way. If I'm, if I'm writing, I'm listening to beats. If I'm not writing, I'm mostly replaying things I've had mm. before. So I'm listening to albums that I really liked. But straight now, if I'm, in a, if I'm just chilling with my homies, I really like I'm a piano. Nice, mm. nice, mm. nice. And when you get into the studio, what's your writing process like? Or mm. how do you then work with a um, producer? Do you usually write and then go meet with the um, uh, producer, producer? Or do you come into the studio and vibe into different beats and then write to them? What's your entire um, songwriting process like? Um, I start with the beats I can accumulate. Mm. And then I write to those ones. So if you can, if I accumulate like 10 beats, probably they're going to be like two inside there that inspire uh -huh. me. So it's a lot of throw away, take this one, throw away, take this one, throw away. Then after I've written them quietly by myself and now I go to the producer and now he helps me translate it into music. Mm. And then I do the same process again, listen again to many, right? Go back there, translate. Mm. And do you write your uh, lyrics or rap that you want to put on the track or sometimes are you freestyling in the studio? It's really rare for me to freestyle actually. So I come with everything written down. Mm. My freestyles are most like the ad libs or like the end parts, the beginning, mm. but the source material, the main parts is me having already done it before. Mm. Then I let the other sides just come as a freestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Or the melodies. You know, you're a very unique rapper. I will say, mm. I, if if I Thank if you. I miss this, you can correct me. Mm. But I've never really heard that you had like a major beef with some other rappers or some other people. Mm. Did you have any beef with any rappers, or how have you maintained to still be a relevant rapper without that? Because sometimes I feel like in the rap game, it's important to have that or to have some sort of um, propaganda, some sort of rivals. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank to God that I don't have to do that for my career. By the way. My career is a very smooth sailing one. It says come write music and then Kosawa. They don't have to do propaganda or stuff like that. But beef. When I was younger, I'd say some people would try to make me have beef with somebody else. Mm. And I'd put that in person. Let's say Femi one. Because mm. literally when we came back to she called me in October for the song um Lip Service. Yes. And you know, when we actually sat down and talked, it was just like, why didn't why why weren't we homies then? And it was just like cause. And then it's funny in the industry when certain people say things about you and mm. other people, mm. sometimes even it makes you drift away from that person. Mm. So it seems like you have beef, but you don't have beef because I don't need to reach out to them because they haven't spoken to me. Yeah, exactly. It's a standoff. Who's going to talk to who first? So as I was saying, when, when she reached out and it's just like, why, why didn't we used to talk before? Because right now we are literally friends. And so beef, that would be the main person somebody would put me with beef with mm. long time ago. But right now you can't even, because it's just like, we're two women who have been here for 10 years, 10 years plus, mm. who are leading our game. Why be rivals when we could get more as being together? Because mm. we started together, Ligiso. Yes, yes. On these same couches, just rapping yes. as young babies over there, 17 year olds. Now we're grown up. So put the beef aside, the supposed beef aside and... Yeah, mm. that's really nice um, and mature mm. um, and a love lip service. Um, okay, so 
I think the last thing I maybe want to ask you is what kind of advice would you give to wannabe rappers? What are the five main things that you need to look out for to be a dope rapper? Five. Five yeah. is many. And you or even yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever One, two, number. Three, four, five. Don't think five. You just say just what say. you think. Yeah, to your camera. Which camera is this mine? This one is That's yours, my yeah. Um, so if you're an upcoming rapper, I'd say what you need most is an understanding of your skill. Your skill, not anybody else's skill. Your skill. You need the right producer by your side. Always the right producer by your side. You need the right... Do you really need a team if you're starting off? You need somebody who you can trust to tell you if what you've made is... is can you say shit on this show? Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. Somebody you can trust if what you've, <laughs> what you've made is shit or if what you've made is nice. Four, um, you need the look. You need the look of a rapper. Don't just... um, Because I know guys really like... I, I'm talking to the guys right now. Guys like this whole T-shirt and need jeans to now may come through, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Figure out your style. That's your style, not anybody else's style. Number five, no, it's going to be a long-term process and it's not going to be immediate. You're not going to get an immediate gratification of your work mm -hmm. and that shouldn't stop you from moving on forward. So it takes time, but it's worth the trip at the end of the time. Wow. Mm. Amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, you guys have gotten some lessons and tips from mm. Wangeshi, if you want to get into rap, if you want to get into music, some of the advice actually works across board. Like mm. if you if you want to be an artist, like you just need to figure out what's your identity, True. what's your look, what's your swag. Mm. Not like dressing like this because somebody else, mm. but I think what's going to make you stand out is just being authentically you. Just being and this is one thing I'm always talking to artists about, but I feel like it hits different when an artist is telling the artist. Mm. So thank you so much for giving um, that advice. Um, I want to thank you for being here on VIP Access. Thank you for having it's me. It's such an honor to have you here. It I is. think you're so dope. Mm. I think we haven't spoken in a very long time, maybe Ever. since. Since I don't, Cox Studio. Yes, yeah, since yeah. Cox Studio. I was like, you're even taller than I thought. You're actually, you're a stallion. <laughs> I, I am a you stallion. You're a stallion. <laughs> you're such a rapper. Oh my God, you're starting to rap, to describe me. Mm. I love it. Mm. <laughs> so all the best. Thank like you. With this new album, mm. with, um, you know, the album that you already released with Car, I'm sure other songs, you know, will keep doing better this year. Maybe True. there are other singles and videos you guys are going to drop for us. Mm. We're looking forward. Mm. Um, and maybe just the last message you want to give to your fans who are watching, what you want to tell them? To my fans who are watching, I'm not going anywhere again. I'm back for real. And there's more music <laughs> to come this year, for sure. More great music, actually. I'm in a really great writing space right now. That's mm. amazing. Thank you so much, Wangeshi. Thank you. That's where we're wrapping up VIP Access this week. I promised you I'm only going to be bringing you the best of the best. Stick around. Next week, we're going to have another dope artist that you want to listen to. VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.